الحمد للہ الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین و نستغفر و نؤمن به و نتوکل علیہ و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئیات اعمالنا من یهده اللہ فلا مضل له و من یضلله فلا هادی له و نشهد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له و نشهد ان سیدنا محمدا عبده و رسوله اصلہو بالہدا و دین الحق لیظہره و لدین کلی و کفا باللہ شہیدا فصل اللہ علیہ وسلم تسلیما کثیرا کثیرا اما بعد فعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وَلَقَدْ يَسْرْنَ الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِمْ مُدَّكِرِ Brothers and sisters, I welcome you all in this class. Arabic is the most easy language to learn. Though it's a very vast language at the same time. How these two things relate to each other, inshallah within this week you will find out that how those, these two statements are true. It's a very wide language and it's a very easy language to understand. I have started with the ayah from Surah Al-Qamar, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَحَلْ مِمْ مُدَّكِرِ Allah Almighty says that we have made the Qur'an most easy for admonition. So is there anyone who is inclined to receive admonition from the Quran. Yes, we are. Alhamdulillah. There are two levels of understanding the Quran, learning the Quran. One is tadabbur. Tadabbur is going in depth into the Quran, trying to understand in depth meanings, to draw the ahkam and nawahi from the Quran. This is not an easy job. To draw ahkam and nawahi, it's not an easy job. You have to have the knowledge of hadith, you have to knowledge, have to knowledge of fiqh, you have to have the knowledge of the kalam of old shawara of Arabic. No, you have to know a lot. But for basic admonition, Allah Almighty has made the Quran very, very easy. Inshallah, we'll find out in coming few days. Inshallah. The Quran, the Holy Quran has got huruf. These are the huruf of the Arabic language. They are alif, ba, ta, sa, jim, ha, kha, dal, ral, ra, za, sin, shin, swad, da, ta, zwa, ayn, gain, fa, qaf, lam, meem, qaf, kaf, lam, meem, noon, waw, ha, and ya. Some people add Hamza before Ya, but the others say no. It is the same letter when Alif has some harakat above, below it, or it has got sukoon, it is not Alif anymore. It is Hamza. So they counted 28. Those who consider Hamza as a separate letter, they will count it as 29. Like all other languages, the alphabets join together to make words which are meaningful and meaningless. So all meaningful words in the Arabic language are known as kalimat. Wahid is kalima and the plural for kalima is kalimat. Remember the pronunciation, it is not kalima, kalima. Kalima means the meaningful word. It's comparable with the speech in English 
and in english you have got parts of speech which are a very long list noun verb pronoun then the the participle and adjective this and that this is a long list but in arabic it's highly in order though they were illiterate people to say but you will find out how illiterate were they the arabic their mind was very scientific and mathematical so they formulated a language which has got set rules and mathematical equations scientific language very very right to say so it has got only three types of kalima ism fail and harf ism seen is with sukoon again ain is with sukoon and ra is with sukoon don't call it ism ism fail and then harf harf is the kalima which obviously if it's a kalima it must have some meanings so though it's a meaningful word but it doesn't convey any message or meaning without being used with a noun or verb ism or fail like example is in an in english this is a complete word in but if i say in would you understand that i have repeated in you will be nowhere i say in there yet you will be nowhere no matter how with emphasis i say in you will say no i'll say in the classroom now you understand it right in america you understand it in the world you understand it so harf is a kalima which though as a kalima does have its own meaning but the meanings are not conveyed until it is used with a noun ism or fail that is verb now we come to the ism and the books you have is beautiful defined noun is the name noun basically ism basically means name so name of what number 1 name of a person name of a place you know name of a person each one of you is a man rajul so it's noun each one of you is a woman imra right so this is noun example of a noun but na name of a person then name of a place detroit america right chicago these are the r market masjid these are the names of the places yeah. then object a pen a marker a table a chair a camera a room room is a place also but this is the example of the other side then the second is the name of the action you know in english the infinitives are treated under the heading of verb to go to come hearing coming going they are all studied under the heading of verb but since these are the names of the act of going coming sitting eating so they are in arabic treated as nouns as asma so the second is action without tense that will come to know later on inshallah third is adjective the quality of something that is also studied under the heading of an ism in arabic not as a separate part of speech as in english
then let's come to the middle one verb it indicates it indicates an act being performed or a state being mentioned in english you have helping verbs for example is am are were was these are helping verbs but certainly verbs in english in arabic we will certainly define this also that it indicates the action or the state with reference to time is am or were they are not acts they are the states so they are also studied under the heading of a verb inshallah details we'll come to know with the passage of time now first of all we start with the is in english when you have to use a noun in a sentence what you are supposed to do about that now for example pen class students sisters you have to make a sentence from of this noun any one of them what is your requirement to make a sentence what you need that is the rule of the language that subject is the first and predicate is the later but what should be your basic knowledge about that sentence for example okay come on army is coming people are coming <laughs> its number in the language in english language whether that particular noun is in english usage a singular or a plural army is not one person army is a collective noun you can say it's a number of people but yet its usage in english is singular so you say army is moving army is coming but when you say people what you would say are coming because this is also a group of persons but its usage in english is plural so in english to form a sentence you have to have the knowledge about that particular noun that whether it's used in english as a singular or plural the gender should also be known to you ladki aayi ladka gaya ladke aaye ladkiyan gayi no is the verb is according to according to the noun in two respects it will take care of the number as well as gender in urdu you got to know two things about a noun number one same as english its number number two its gender whether it's in arabic use masculine or feminine you know and remember masculine and feminine is something different and male and female is something different you have to separate the two are you with me male and female is something separate and masculine and feminine is something separate the important in terms of language and grammar is not male and female important is masculine and feminine you know country like for example in english country truck in classical english they are used as feminine but they are not male or female truck is neither male nor female country is nor male nor female but its usage that counts so in arabic you are supposed to know five aspects of a noun four characters of a noun
फोर करेक्टर्स कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ एन इसम आर नाउन टू स्टार्ट विद विल कॉल नाउन बट ग्रेजुअली इनशाला विल स्विच टू द अरेबिक टर्मिनोलॉजी बट टू स्टार्ट विद फॉर योर कन्वीनियंस आई विल यूज द वर्ड नाउन टू सो फोर कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ अ नाउन इन अरेबिक कैन यू गेस वाई आई गेव यू एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ इंग्लिश एंड अरेबिक एंड उर्दू डू जी एव एनी आइडिया यू नो ए बिगिनर बिकम्स अपसेट ओ यू हैव टू नो फोर थिंग्स नो इन इंग्लिश इट इज वन इन उर्दू इट इज टू एंड इन चाइनीज आर एनी अदर लैंग्वेज इट मे बी टेन बट यू डोंट हैव टू बी स्केर्ड ऑफ दिस दर हो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर फोर कैरेक्टर्स but these characters actually make arabic language beautiful language a mathematical language that inshallah you will find out so the first character of an arabic noun is known as a arab a arab literally means to arabize a arab literally means to arabize so this is the classical character of the arabic language there is no arabic without arab and this character perhaps you will not find 100% in any other language in urdu also we have got this a little bit वट द डिफरेंट बिटवीन किताबों एंड किताबें विशाख साहब है ना फर्क मेज पर दस किताबें पढ़ी हैं मैंने किताबों को मेज पर रख दिया हाउ इट बिकम्स किताबों फ्रॉम किताबें सो इट दिस इज बेसिकली देयर इन उर्दू ऑल्सो बट इन उर्दू इट्स नॉट टॉट द वे इट शुड बी टॉट इन अरेबिक लैंग्वेज इन उर्दू इट्स नॉट मेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट but in arabic it's very important right but there are some hints of the language too hey, what is arab simply to understand with the example of a pronoun i was coming to the office whom i am talking about myself whose name is abdul sami i say i was coming to the office on my way my car broke down who is this my no no when i am saying it is the same as i basically this my is indicating to me and a friend gave me ride who is this me then again the same why there are three words <laughs> actually this is arab <laughs> in english it is there in only pronouns you have got an objective case a nominative case and a possessive case but in arabic there is no noun without arab every noun has to have an arab this is the classical feature of the arabic language and in arabic language noun doesn't exist without arab it has to have an arab whether it is visible or it's been invisible but when it's being used in a sentence it has to have its form like again i give you an example from english what is this why not red <laughs> it's read as well as red then again two red read red red first form second form and third form though it appears same but when it will appear in a sentence you have to recognize it which form is this it's pretty much same Spelling are the same, so 
the difference is there in verb difference is there that though it's not visible but it has a form a verb in english has a form a verb in english must have a form first form second form a third form like that in arabic a noun has to have a form the arab noun has to have an arab whatever you call it because this concept in 100% doesn't exist in any other language so it cannot exactly be named in other language but you can call it it's the status of the noun it's the position of the noun it's the expansion of the noun whatever, whatever you call it but definitely it has it is something and i would like to call it arab because there is no parallel english word of arab in english grammar we have the nomenclature in pronouns nominative form possessive form and objective form but in arabic these are examples one of the examples of each case it's not only the object which will be in the objective form but many other cases in many other cases too the arab of a noun will be in the same form but that is not the object so we'll call it arab then first character of the arabic language noun of an arabic language is arab second character b is the number in arabic you will call it adad this dal is with fatha adad then the third is its gender you know language represents the culture of those who speak that language in english culture gender is not very important there is a mixed society and gender is not important so as i said to form a sentence you only need to you know the number but most you go to the conservative societies more you go towards the east you will see segregation and so would you find in every language the difference between the masculine and the feminine number 4 d our teacher taught it at as qism or type so since this is the name used here you can also use the same range 